welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on the effects of globalization on developed nations. Let's start by taking a look at the benefits to producers. The first and probably biggest benefit is that they have more markets in which to sell their products. With more customers to sell to, they're able to increase the size of their business and take advantage of economies of scale to reduce their costs. Producers may also benefit from better quality or cheaper or both better quality and cheaper inputs to their production processes. This is because they will be getting more specialised products due to globalisation forcing all countries to specialise. Globalisation leads to more movement of labour between countries. Developed nations often benefit from an influx of skilled labour from less developed countries. This gives producers in developed nations access to a better skilled, cheaper labour force. Globalisation also makes it easier for producers to get access to shared research and development projects with firms in other countries. This helps them to become more efficient and develop innovative products. While globalisation does mean that producers have more customers to sell to, it also means that they have more competition to face from overseas firms. In certain industries, there will be a loss of competitive advantage and local firms will no longer be viable. Those producers that don't move to more productive new industries could find themselves going out of business. Producers that have grown in size in order to take advantage of globalisation and the larger markets they have to sell to are also vulnerable to drops in demand in these same foreign markets. Workers in developed nations should be able to benefit from more jobs being available as firms grow in size to take advantage of the larger markets available through globalisation. Globalisation also brings more foreign investment and these firms investing in the country generate jobs that workers can take. Workers are also able to work in more and more countries, which is very beneficial for those people that would like to work in a different place. Workers in declining industries may find that they lack the necessary skills to transition to new formed industries. This may lead to long-term unemployment for these workers. Other workers may face job loss through automation as firms automate processes in a bid to cut costs and compete with overseas firms. Workers may also suffer from job insecurity, with slowdowns in global demand leading to further job losses. Immigration may lead to increased competition for jobs in developed nations, and this may help to keep wage rates low. Globalisation also brings many benefits for consumers in developed countries. One of the greatest benefits is increased choice. Consumers can now buy products from companies in all sorts of countries across the world. This also gives them access to cheaper products, meaning they get to keep more of their money and have more to spend on other things. Globalisation also means that people are going to be specialising, and as firms specialise, the quality of their products increases and they seek to innovate to stay ahead of the rest of the competition. This leads to better quality products and newer, more exciting products for consumers to buy. Skilled migration can also lead to better services within developed countries. The NHS, for example, recruits a large number of doctors and nurses from less developed countries overseas. Globalisation also means closer ties between countries, which means less restrictions on travel for consumers that would like to visit other countries. One of the problems that globalisation gives rise to for consumers is homogenisation. This is because very large firms, international firms, outcompete small or more local firms, and the experience of going shopping in any developed country can be very similar with a lot of the same brands on offer for a lot of the same products. Price volatility is the other big cost that consumers of developed countries face from globalisation. This is because markets have a large amount of demand and demand can sway very quickly causing big changes in price. Recent problems to supply caused by the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine have shown in several markets quite how extreme price volatility can be and the big effect it can have on consumers. 
Globalisation generally improves economic sustainability. This is because globalisation leads to greater specialisation. Firms in developed nations move their production to more profitable areas and away from ones where they're no longer competitive. This means overall costs are reduced and the quality of inputs and the cost of inputs to production for most firms will go down as they're able to get these from other specialists. This lowering of costs should mean a positive cycle of economic growth. In terms of social sustainability, globalisation can help to keep prices low, which can help to improve people's quality of life as they're able to afford more of the goods and services that they want. Globalisation can affect different communities in a very uneven way in developed countries. In the UK, many of the poorest and most deprived areas are that way as a result of declining industries that came about because of increased globalisation. When it comes to environmental sustainability, globalisation means an increased use of fossil fuels in transporting goods around the world. However, there is a trade-off where there's more efficient production due to everyone specialising. There can be a tendency to move production to countries with lower standards of environmental protection and people need to realise that this still contributes to global environmental issues such as overall emission levels. That brings us to the end of this video looking at the effects of globalisation on developed countries. Join me in the next video when we'll examine the effects of globalisation on less developed countries. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.